Welcome to the MBS Keynote. In this presentation we want to show you what's new in the MBS plugins this year. We are making plugins since 2001, so for the last 18 years it has been my full-time job to work with Sojo to make plugins and projects for various customers. This way we got a huge toolbox with classes needed for our projects and classes needed for clients. Currently we have 40 plugins in our toolbox and this includes over 62,000 items documented in our plugin reference. In total you find over 2,400 classes and a lot of controls. With the plugin we deliver over 2,000 example projects, which show you how to use our plugin functions. We update the plugins regularly, and so over the years we built this nice table to show you which plugin version should work with which Sojo version. So whenever something changes in Sojo which requires us to update the plugins, we have to raise the requirement and give you a new version of the plugin to use with all the existing Soldier versions available till the date we release the plugins. So best always use the latest version of the plugins so you don't run into any issues. A few of the changes I want to show you. So for 2015 release 3 we added 64-bit and ARM support to our plugins. Then with 2016 R2 there were a few new keywords in Sojo, so we had to change our declarations. With 2016 R4 a new API was released for the plugins to release Windows device contexts, so any plugin function using those contexts had to be updated. For 2017 release 1 there was an update to the WebKit engine used on Windows, so the plugins using those WebKit engine functions had to be updated. For 2017 release 2 we updated to GTK3, so you can use plugin functions with both GTK2 and 3 depending on the Soldier version you use to build the application. And for 2017 release 3, we updated the plugin to work better with the 64 bit IDE, as the older versions of the plugins may not load anymore. And for 2018 release 2, there was again a WebKit update, so we had to adjust the plugin, and the graphics class now uses double values for the parameters, so we had to adjust our plugin functions which use the graphics class internally. Not every change may affect you, but it may be better to keep current with the plugins just to avoid any trouble. There were a few general changes in the last year. We reduced the number of plugins from 65 to 40 by merging a few of them. This should make it easier for you to keep track of which plugins you actually need to use. Then we added trial license keys. You can now request a trial license from the website and we can give you a full working version of the plugins without any nagging screen for two months. Then we made changes for the Mac App Store. This includes using less carbon functions and changing functions to use Coco frameworks instead. Over the last 18 years a couple of functions have been rewritten several times, so the function you called stays the same, but under the hood the implementation changed from old APIs to new APIs. And for Windows we fixed the DLL limit, so we don't run any more into the problem that Windows usually can't load more than 100 DLLs. Speaking of Windows, we got a class to show you the standard font picker dialog. 
The dialogue is localized and as you see here, this is a German screenshot. Then we got a class to query the system resources for the user interface. You can query how many GDI objects you have and you can identify leaks in your project so you can make sure you don't run out of GDI handles. Then we got a property to enable spell checking for the standard social text area on Windows. We have similar properties for macOS. Then we got the message filter functions for the COM communication. So if you ever saw this dialog that the server is busy, this can be avoided by using our init message filter MBS function. For Windows we got classes to handle touch events. You can configure the various events you accept and get events for pan, rotate and zoom gestures. And if the user has a pointer device, you can get win pointer event MBS objects with the details about the use of the pointer. For Windows, we also got the Windows Device Mode class, which allows you to change properties for device modes, including editing the preferences of the printer setup class. Our Windows Clipboard class allows you to read and write pictures in both the device independent bitmap format and the standard bitmap format. So if you ever wondered why a picture you put on the clipboard didn't paste in one of the applications, they may use that other format. We got a Windows Display class so you can query available displays on your computer including the DPI numbers and size of the device in millimeters. And our Windows Properties class allows you to set properties on any windows on windows so you can disable things like the touch event on the edge of the screen. As you may know we have a plugin to work with Excel files without Microsoft Excel being installed. You can read and write the older and the newer Excel formats, add styles, formats, sheets, images and enter all the data you need. For reading data from huge Excel documents, we got functions to partially load large Excel documents. So if the document doesn't fit in memory completely, you can only read the sheets you need. And all this reading and writing of Excel documents can now be threaded on a preemptive thread, so your application doesn't block the user interface while reading or loading big documents. We got a new plugin to work with the sound file library. This is an open source library to read and write various audio file formats. So if you need, you can easily read and write Microsoft WAV files or the AEF files on Mac. You can get sample data from our port audio class for recording from a microphone, as well as you can pass those audio samples to our port audio classes for playing back on a speaker. For working on audio files, you can also use our tag library class to read and write metadata on those audio files, including ID3 tags. We do have the DynaPDF plugin to work with PDF files and it has a lot of features. New in the last year are functions to handle layers much better so you can now hide layers or enable layers better, as well as extract content over layer. Our replace image function allows you to replace existing pictures in a template, so the user can, for example, create a template of a PDF document with placeholder pictures and you can replace them with the actual content. When you prepare PDF files for PDFA format, you can now provide the ECC profiles in memory to replace any missing or invalid profile. We got a new function to extract text from a PDF document. So now you can specify an area on the page 
we had to look for the text and extract only that portion. That can be very useful if you know that you have to get invoice numbers from invoices and the number is always at the same position in the document. And for signing PDFs, we got support for 2048-bit certificate files as well as for 1096-bit files. And on Windows, you can use the Windows Certificate Store to pick a certificate and sign your document. For the next version, we already have a working JBIC2 compressor. So you can apply lossless compression to your one-bit images in your PDF files and the result is a much smaller file with the same quality. For our curl plugin, we got a few upgrades, including support for IDN domains on Windows, so all your special domains with umlauts or Asian characters will work. The new curl meme part class allows you to create form data to pass to your website scripts, like in PHP. For working with Amazon Web Services, we get a new setup AVS function, which allows you to sign the request with the required keys for sending them to the Amazon Web Service. This works with various services, including S3, and we have examples for upload and download available. But you can use it for all the other AWS services too. For using services like Twitter or Facebook, you need open authentication. So we got a new setup OAuth function, which takes again the required keys to sign the request and set up the curl transfer so you can talk to various services. We got a new batch email example project so we can see how to efficiently send a lot of emails. By using preemptive threading, we can send emails five times faster than if we send one after one. For Mac, we got 64 bit upgrades for our spell checker and password assistant classes, so you can better use them in your 64 bit applications. With our MapKit classes, you can decide between using Apple Maps on 64-bit or Google Maps on both 32-bit and 64-bit. Our NSURL connection filter allows you to set the timeouts for transfers using the newer SojourNet HTTP socket class. And you can specify the caching policy. And our Canvas Gesture class allows you to catch gestures made while focus is on your canvas instead of using one of our existing controls supporting gestures. Apple includes core machine learning frameworks in macOS 10.13. We have a plugin class to use those classes from Apple and load a model and run data through it. For example, we can load an existing machine learning file from Apple to classify image content. And we got this example project for you. So here we have a picture of something and we loaded a model which will categorize images based on the content in one of a thousand categories. And for this picture the most likely category is to be a lion on the picture. Other models are available including models to categorize text so you can detect if someone is angry or happy in a text, as well as to detect the language of a text. Our AV Foundation plugin got upgraded to work better with timecodes. With the new AV timecode class, you can read timecodes and see the details. We got new standard controls from Apple Wapt in our AV Capture View control and our AV Player View control so you can have the standard controls in your application, but this is only for 64-bit. And we got an example for playing a transparent video, so you can play videos which have no background, and so the content can float on top of existing content. And we do have an example to play in a donut-shaped window.
On MacOS, we have a lot of core image classes available, and with the CA detector class, we can detect QR codes, faces, rectangles, and text portions in a picture. The barcode creation is really useful, and we got an example to detect barcodes live while seeing the preview from the camera. And the processing is done in a preemptive thread to avoid your application slowing down. We can also use the core image filters to create barcodes, including code 128, PDF 417, and QR codes. As you may know, the HTML viewer on Mac for Sojo uses WebKit 1, and we got a new WebKit control for using WebKit 2 for 64-bit applications. It, it allows you to leverage the newer framework from Apple, which uses helper processes to render the website, so a bug and the WebKit engine can't crash your application. You can run JavaScript in the WebKit. No, no mind. You can run JavaScript in our web view control and get a callback from JavaScript back as a Sojo event. If needed, you can take a snapshot of the website as a picture. For the store kit, we got new functions to work on trials and on in-app purchases in the Mac OS App Store. On the networking front, we got a new raw socket class which allows you to create low level sockets where you can define anything yourself, including headers and you can even create your own protocols. Our simple network management protocol class allows you to query devices with a SNMP protocol and this for example allows you to query the counters of a copy machine. Then we have Linux. We updated all the plugin classes for GTK3 and the plugin will dynam dynamically use GTK2 or GTK3 depending on the soldier version. And all plugins are available for the Raspberry Pi. We have a class in our plugins to work on Word files. This includes loading a Word file, extracting text, replacing text with actually text values, putting in pictures and saving the word file back to disk. And now we got a function to append to our word file so you can batch create a thousand letters if you need as one word file. For years we have SSH functions so you can log in into our remote server and execute commands. We got a new class SSH2 tunnel to connect to a server using either IPv4 or IPv6, and then from that server connect to another machine to get a tunnel. And we do have an example to connect to MySQL using the standard Sojo MySQL class through our SSH tunnel. For the SQL plugin, we added the support for kubeSQL in the last year and we include a built-in library for kubesql so you don't need to ship any DLL. We do have examples to connect to Microsoft SQL Server for Mac, Windows and Linux. On Windows we can use either OLEDB, DB Library, ODBC or on Mac we can use FreeTDS library as well as on Linux. So you can have a connection to Microsoft SQL Server from both Linux and Mac without installing anything. We support now SSL for MySQL so you can set the required options and get a secure connection. All the options you set are now debuggable as we provide them as a dictionary for viewing and the debugger. And for easier insert and update operations on the databases, we can now build the SQL for you in the background and execute it. So as you see in this example code, you provide the values 
other dictionary and also you provide the dictionary with the keys so we can build the SQL for you and execute it without you having to write a SQL line. We got a new plugin class for the Clipper library. This is an open source library which allows you to do polygon clipping. As you see in the examples, you can get the intersection and the union of uh, polygons and you can add border to existing polygons. We have a picture MBS class which allows you to create pictures outside of the picture class in Sojo. And there we got new functions to multiply and unmultiply RGBA data. So we can better convert between the multiplied pictures in Sojo with alpha channel compared to the unmultiplied pictures with masks. And we got better channel functions so you can easier operate just on one channel of a picture. For working with USB devices, we got a new class based on libUSB, an open source library to talk to USB devices on Mac, Windows and Linux. We also have HIT API for talking to USB HIT devices. Depending on which device you have, you might either use the more high-level HIT library or the more low-level libUSB. In both you can list the devices, you can connect the device, transmit data, but you need to know the protocol of the device. So you may need to build the data packages to send including any checksums and header information. Then we worked on a Bluetooth plugin for Mac and Windows. It supports both the classic Bluetooth as well as the new Bluetooth LE. You can find devices, connect and transfer data. We got a few utility functions including the split comma separated values function which allows you to easily read in CSV data. It will automatically detect whether you have comma, semicolon or tab as a separator and it handles quotes correctly as well as delimiters inside the quotes. Our JSON functions have been upgraded to support bigger numbers including 64-bit integers and you can convert from JSON to HTML to show the JSON easily in a HTML viewer. Our mount MBS function can mount a server volume on your local computer. We also got an unmount function to well, unmount. The mount operation can run in a background thread so it doesn't block your user interface. If you have existing volumes and you want to know if they are from the server, you can check the mount pass function. And for Mac, you are allowed to use the NetFS mount class, which you can mount asynchronously in the background. And for the MBS Sojo conference in Munich, we got a new thing for you which is ThinkIt. This will allow you to get native 3D graphics for Mac in Sojo using Metal and ThinkIt frameworks from Apple. We got a new control, a CN control, which you can put on your Windows. This is 64-bit and Mac only, but it allows you to load an existing model and show it to the user. We'll add more classes over time so you can build shapes in memory as needed. And now it's time for questions. Please don't hesitate to contact us with your questions. Thank you for watching.